pursuers to the White Sox are losing, and the third will be their opponent here tonight as Doc Ellis gets in his warm-up tosses. Jim Sunberg, Iowa graduate out of Galesburg, Illinois, doing the catching. Mike Hargrove down at first base. Bump Wills at second. Bert Campanaris at shortstop. And Toby Hara at third. An outfield of rookie Keith Smith in left. Claudel Washington in center. And Davey May in right field. Juan Beniquis and Ken Henderson, two of their outfielders, are on the disabled list and will not be seeing action here in this three-game set. And we see where... Don Gullett has been placed on the disabled list for the Yankees, and also that Greg Nettles was injured last night and may miss a few games. So we will not be seeing Gullett in New York. Whether we see Nettles or not uh, all depends on a later report on his condition. But uh, they thought after the injury last night that he might have to miss at least two or three games, and they had that doubleheader tonight. Boston wound up getting four runs in that second inning they lead Seattle six to nothing at the end of two here Ralph Gar leads it off hitting 302 eight homers and 41 RBIs the White Sox and the Rangers this is their 13th meeting of the year Texas is 1-7 the White Sox have won five right hander ready here's the pitch and it's up high of all the White Sox lost the season series to the Rangers at Comiskey Park winning only two games while losing five but have won three out of five here at Texas including two one-run games, both by the identical scores of four to three and both in 11 innings. Toby Harris playing in at the grass at third. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and it's a strike in the outside corner. Evens the count, one and one. They're expecting a capacity crowd here tonight, which is 35,698. The outfield playing guard to go to the opposite field. Big gap in right center. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Inside, a ball backs him off the plate. Dennis Eckersley has made the big news in the majors today. He's tossed a one-hit shutout tonight against Milwaukee. Indians, after losing six in a row, have now won three in a row, and they're winning the second game of the doubleheader, one to nothing. Ellis ready, the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a grounder, a two-hopper down to the second baseman. Wills, he has it and throws him out. And there's one out here in the first inning. So there's one down and Alan Bannister, the batter. Bannister hitting an even 300, three homers and 50 RBIs. Well, we imagine some of the Phillies will be listening and watching to the game tonight. Going back to Chicago, and they're in town to face the Cubs and a couple of ex-Phillies on this White Sox ball club. Alan Bannister being the foremost as he played with the Phillies and Jim Essien, who is in the Philly organization. They give Allen a lot of room in left center field. Here's the pitch. This is the inside of all. This is the second straight club that we have seen now that plays Bannister to go the other way. Allen mainly a pull hitter, but he's very adept at going to the opposite field. Here's a pitch inside of all. That's something here. The first two pitches have been inside, but yet the outfield playing him go the other way. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a check swing, hits his bat, and slices off into the seats. We want to send get well wishes to Tommy Ivan, the vice president of the Chicago Blackhawks, and their former general manager. Tommy not feeling too well, and we wish him nothing but the best. The wind is blowing out tonight from home plate to straightaway center field. Here's the pitchers, a swing, and a one-hopper to Harris third. He's got it, and he throws him out for the second out of the inning. Bob Lemon mentioning to Harry Carey that the players concerned a little bit with this capacity crowd. People are sitting in straightaway center field, which is only 400 feet from home plate. And that they might have some problems picking up the ball here tonight. So Ellis has retired the first two men on ground outs to the second baseman and the third baseman as George Orta steps in. Orta hitting 284, 11 homers and 66 RBIs. Right-hander with both feet on the rubber goes into the windup and the first pitch to Orta. Outside of ball. Ellis has fallen behind every hitter here in the first inning. But yet he has not allowed a ball out of the infield. Four of Orta's 11 home runs have been hit against this club in this ballpark. Here's a swing and a one-hopper down to Toby Hara. He's got it, at, or rather to Hargrove at first. Makes the unassisted out, and the White Sox are down one, two, three without a ball out of the infield. So we're halfway through the first inning. It's the White Sox nothing. The Rangers coming to bat. 
the leader of the bands at True Value Hardware Stores does more than just play music. The General Electric 7-band portable radio will play AM and FM music, and it also lets you monitor CB calls, hear your favorite TV show, public service information, aircraft communications, plus instant weather reports. True Value Hardware Stores also offer the GE 3-band portable radio. It lets you hear AM or FM music and listen to your favorite TV show on VHF. That's channels 2 through 13. Choose the leader of the bands, the GE 7-band portable radio, or choose the GE 3-band portable. They both run on house current or batteries, and they're just part of the complete selection of General Electric radios that you'll find at all participating True Value hardware stores. True Value hardware makes more than just a name. It's our way of doing business that means True Value. This is WMAQ Chicago. Lauren Brown back at Texas as Francisco Barrios begins his warm-up tosses. As he will face the top of the order, Mike Hargrove, Burt Campanaris, and Claudel Washington. Well, the Detroit three-run lead was short-lived as the Twins came up with four runs in the second inning off of Arroyo. And Crawford has come on to pitch. I'll tell you what, that Arroyo has lost 11 this year. He's won six. Half of his wins have been against the White Sox. If it wasn't for the White Sox, he'd probably be in Evansville right now. That's amazing. Boy, I tell you, he's like Sandy Koufax against the White Sox. Baltimore and Oakland tied up 1-1 at the end of four. Defensively, Jim Essien behind the plate. Lamar Johnson's at first. George Orta at second. Alan Bannister at short, Eric Sauter home at third. An outfielder, Ralph Gar in left, Chet Lemon in center, and Richie Zisk in right. Mike Hargrove leads it off. A 3.07 hitter, five homers and 40 RBIs. He has an on-base percentage of 48% since Billy Hunter inserted him into the leadoff spot. Right hand, you're ready. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball low. Hargrove and Sunberg have been the two keys in the resurgence since Billy Hunter has taken over. Both of them have played outstanding baseball. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball for a strike in the inside corner. Evens the count up at 1-1. One one. Barrios has twice faced the Rangers this year, but he was not involved in the decision on either occasion. May the 10th, he went seven innings, permitted five hits and two runs. The Rangers won it three to two. Here's a fastball low. Thrown everything fast here to Hargrove, and the count is two and one. On August the 3rd, he went three and two-third innings, gave up five runs on eight hits as Texas won 12 to 10. But he was not the pitcher of record in that game. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to center field. Chet Lemon is there. He waits, and he takes it, and there's one out. So Levin calls it in in left center field for the first out. And the batter will be Burt Campanaris. Shortstop hitting 247. Four homers and 35 RBIs. Barrios is making his 24th appearance in his 22nd start for the White Sox. His previous 21 games, he has completed six. In 159 and two-third innings, he's allowed 72 earned runs on 171 hits. Ten of them homers. He has struck out 86 and walked 37. A little better than a 2-to-1 ratio. Here's the pitch, and it's low inside of all. He's 1-11, and he has lost four. He's trying to win his 12th here tonight, and if he can, he'll be tied with Steve Stone on the club lead for victories. Here's a swing and a one-hopper back to the mound, and he's got it and throws him out, and there's two down. So two up and two down for the Rangers here in the first inning as Claudel Washington steps in, hitting 289. Eight homers and 40 RBIs. 75 degrees at game time. Fort Worth, Texas is just to the west of Arlington, and they had quite a downpour about an hour and a half before game time, but that rain has gone north of the Arlington area. Looked like we might get hit for a little bit, but it has passed us by, and we should be all right the rest of the night. Claudell, a left-handed hitter. Here's the first pitch of fastball for a strike of the knees. 3.30 down the lines here at Texas, 3.70 to the power alleys and right and left center, and 400 feet to straightaway center. Barrios ready, the one-strike pitch, a breaking ball that he jumps on and hits to right field, the wind carrying it, 
Going back is Zisk. In right center, he's there, and he's got it. And that retires the side. So it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Rangers here as both clubs are set down in order in the first inning. We're at the end of one, the White Sox nothing, the Rangers nothing. Imagine one cubic foot, a solid square, one foot high, one foot wide, one foot deep. Now imagine five cubic feet. Based on the U.S. government's 1977 estimates of new vehicle interior size, that's how much more room you get inside the new Chevrolet than you get in the older style full-size cars still being sold by Chevrolet's nearest sales competitor. That's the U.S. government estimate as reported in the 1977 EPA guide for new car buyers. You get five more cubic feet of room inside the new Chevrolet because room is important, America, and Chevrolet wants to bring you more. Lauren Brown back at Arlington, Texas, as we go to the second inning, no score in the ball game. It'll be Richie Zisk, Oscar Gamble, and Lamar Johnson to face Doc Ellis. Well, the last time Richie Zisk faced Doc Ellis, he took a fastball under his chin. He was ready to go out to the mound after his former teammate. That was broken up, and then Richie promptly singled, and the White Sox got a rally off of Doc and eventually knocked him out of the ballgame. So this is the first time he has faced him since that incident coming in hitting 305 with 22 homers and 77 RBIs. Zisk leads the club in all three of those categories, hitting, home runs, and RBIs. In the home run area, he is tied with the man in the on-deck circle, Oscar Gamble. Ellis has won six and lost nine this year. This is his third club this season, the Yankees, Oakland, and now the Rangers. He's four and three since joining Texas with a 307 earned run average. Here's the first pitch inside of all. He's given up five home runs in 82 innings since joining the club. They have a ray gun here. Here's the pitch, a swing and a miss. Radar gun that clocks the pitchers, and in the first inning, they report Barrios threw at 91 miles an hour, and the Doc Ellis threw at 88 miles an hour. One ball and one strike to Zisk. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a base hit to right field. That's the first hit of the ball game. Well, Zisk got the first hit for the White Sox last night in a similar situation, leading off the second inning. And both hits in the last two nights to give the White Sox their first hit went to the opposite field. So a runner on and Oscar Gamble the batter. Oscar hitting 3-271, 22 homers and 53 RBIs. Oscar hitting 313 against the Rangers this year. Outfield plays him deep. Give him a lot of room to left center. Here's the first pitch to Oscar, and it's a strike. Barlow has come on to pitch for California in the second as the Yankees just came up with three runs. They're at the end of two in the second game. Yankees leading California 3-2 after beating Brett in the first game, 10-1. to 1. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball for a strike in the outside corner. And Gamble is quickly in the hole, 0-2. Two strikes to the batters. This with the leadoff of first. Here's the pitch, outside of all. That second Met Pirate game at Pittsburgh... Pittsburgh won the first game 3-2. to two. As Myrick going against Keeson. Right-hander ready out of the stretch. The 1-2 pitch. Swing and a foul behind Vinny Minoso. Coaching at first. Bounces into the box seats. So as of right now, with the Pirates winning the first game of the doubleheader and the Phillies beating the Cubs today, the Phillies are four out in front of the Cubs, and the Pirates have moved into second place. Here's the one-two pitch outside the ball. Two balls and two strikes to gamble. A runner at first, nobody out. We're in the second inning. Of 
Hargrove playing behind the runner at first. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder to Hargrove. He's got it. He goes to second for one. The relay, not in time. Doc Ellis covering, and he's arguing now with the first base umpire, Larry Barnett. As they get the front man, Hargrove to Campanaris, on to Ellis, and they miss the double play. So Zisk is out from three to six, and Gamble is on in the fielder's choice, and the batter is Lamar Johnson. Lamar hitting 296, 14 homers and 45 RBIs. Well, there's been a correction out of Detroit. Minnesota did not get four runs in the second. They got seven runs in the second. Boy, you wonder, I guess the White Sox have kept Mr. Arroyo in the big leagues this year. So it's 7-3 to three, Minnesota over the Tigers in the second inning. Here's a swing and a base hit up the middle. Washington charges it, but Gamble will hold up at second as Lamar Johnson goes after the first pitch and singles up the middle. That's the second hit off of Ellis in the inning, and the batter is Chet Lemon. Lemon hitting 281, 16 homers, and 50 RBIs. Chet has had the best year of any of the White Sox against Texas, hitting an even 400 against the Rangers with three homers and 13 RBIs. Well, you figure that Minnesota club, the way they can hit, would have a field day in Detroit, and they're having one tonight. Ellis working out of the stretch, leans in and gets his sign from Sunberg. Now he's ready, and the first pitch to Lemon, swinging a grounder to Toby Harris, goes to second for one, the relay double play. Chet Lemon on the first pitch hits a bouncer, actually just a one-hopper to Harris third, went around the horn to second to first, and the White Sox are out of the inning. No runs, two hits, one man left out. So we go to the bottom of the second, the Sox nothing, the Rangers nothing. One of the big reasons why a Zenith Chroma Color 2 should be your next color TV is Zenith Space Command 1000 with instant zoom close-up. It's an exclusive Zenith feature that zooms you into the action. Just press the zoom button on the remote control and zoom picture is 50% larger. You get an instant close-up and it's available on selected 19, 23, and 25-inch diagonal Zenith Chroma Color 2 models. So stop in at your Zenith dealer for a demonstration and zoom into the action. Lord Brown back at Texas as we move to the bottom half of the second inning. There's no score in the ball game. It'll be the four, five, and six hitters for the Rangers. Tom Greve, Davey May, and Toby Herrod to face Francisco Barrios. Well, after this weekend, the White Sox will have 27 games left with teams in the Western Division. Nine with California, six with Minnesota, then seven with Seattle and five with Oakland. The Rangers will have 28 games left with Western clubs. Eight with California, seven against Minnesota and Oakland, six against Seattle and two against Kansas City. Here's the first pitch to the leadoff man, Grieve, and it's a strike on the outside corner. Grieve hitting 218, five homers and 18 RBIs. Barrios in the windup delivers. Here's a swing and a pop-up coming back behind home plate. Essien giving chase. He's got a play and he's got it. And there's one out. So Grieve pops up behind home plate for the first out. And the batter is Davey May. May hitting 248. Five homers and 34 RBIs. Kansas City after this weekend has 29 games left with Western Division clubs. Eight with California. Five with Minnesota. Two with Texas. And seven apiece against Oakland and Seattle. The Twins have only 20 games left with Western Division clubs. Right-hander ready. Here's the first pitch inside of all. Texas will face the Twins seven times. The Twins will face the White Sox six times. Kansas City five times. And Oakland twice. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Here's a swing and a smash foul down the right side. And the count even up 1-1. One one. Well, Minnesota has only 20 left with the Western Division. They've got it against all three of their contending ball clubs. 
18 of the 20 games. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Here's a swing and a foul back to the second screen. They have a small screen right behind home plate and then another screen extending above the second deck. An open-air stadium. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Just missed on the outside corner of all evens the count 2-2. Two and two. Kansas City just tied up Toronto with two in the fourth inning. 4-4, four, four, Kansas City and Toronto. Here's a pitch outside of all. So the count goes full to Davey May. Outfield plays him around to the right. Barrios ready, goes into the windup. The 3-2 pitchers are swinging a fly ball to left field. Gar running after it. It's going to drop in there a base hit. Here goes May headed for second, and he's in there easily with a double. A lazy fly ball down the left field line. We told you the outfield was playing him around to pull the ball, and he went to the opposite field and looped it where they weren't. So the Rangers have a runner in scoring position on a opposite field double. They play the man straight away. He's out, but you got to play to his tendencies, and that is to pull the ball, and he didn't. So Toby Hara, the batter, hitting 270, 17 homers and 55 RBIs. And the first pitch to him is a ball. Talking to Barrios at the airport this morning, he says, I'm going to have to quit thinking and just go out there and pitch. He says, I've been thinking too much. Right-hander working out of the stretch for the first time tonight. Delivers a fastball for a strike. Evens the count one and one. No score. We're in the bottom of the second. These Rangers have been hot. They've won four out of their last five, 17 of their last 21, 26 of their last 33. Here's the 1-1 pitchers. A swing and a foul back to the screen, and he's in the hole of all in two strikes. And since Billy Hunter took over... They have won 29 and lost 13 and gained seven games on the White Sox. They've gone from nine out to two out. A ball and two strikes to Hera. Barrios just shook off Essie and now he's ready. The one-two pitch, swing and a foul, slice down the right side and out of play. So we'll do it again. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WMAQ Chicago. WMAQ. One ball and two strikes to Toby Hara. Here in the bottom of the second, a runner at first base or at second base with one out. Here's the pitch. And a strike three called. He knew it. He gave him a changeup, caught the outside part of the plate. And Hara wasn't looking for that at all, and he was totally fooled. Never got the bat. Moved a bit, and that is the first strikeout for Barrios. And the batter is Bump Wills, hitting 278, six homers and 42 RBIs. The outfield plays him to go the other way. Orta at second, playing way back in the edge of the outfield grass. Lamar Johnson playing back. Here's the pitch curveball for a strike. Frank Sips from Bloomingdale, Michigan is here rooting for the White Sox tonight. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul sliced into the reserve seats. Dave Alice. Dave and Allison kids are here from Piper City, Illinois, enjoying the 100-degree temperatures they've been having in the area. Well, it's 75 here at game time. It was hot this afternoon, and it cooled off with this rain coming throughout the area. Right-hander ready. Here's the two-strike pitch. Here's a swing and a shot into the right field corner. It is in there a base hit. Here comes May around to score. Here comes Wills going to second, and the Rangers lead one to nothing. An 0-2 fastball that he pulled down the right field line for a double, and the Rangers jump out in front one to nothing. 
It looked for a moment that he was going to get out of the inning. That is the 43rd run driven in by the rookie. And the batter is the catcher, Jim Sundberg, hitting 285, three homers and 43 RBIs. Barrios working out of the stretch, delivers in the first pitch, a swing and a miss, strike one. Sundberg has been a 400 hitter in his last 36 games, moving his average from 218 to 285. Jim Colburn, the Kansas City pitcher who got beat out here last night, said he can't figure him out. Here's the one-strike pitch inside a ball. He says, I give him a pitch and get him out. The next time I give him the same pitch, and he hit, hit, gives a hit off me. He said, I, I just had nothing but problems with it. Well, Pat Corrales has changed his batting stance a mite, and it's made all the difference in the world. Runner at second, and Barrios takes his foot off the rubber and forces Wills to go back to second. Wills doing a little dancing out there, and now Essien goes out to talk to Sunberg. A runner at second, two out. There was a runner at second with two out and a two-strike count on Wills when he doubled into the right field corner. Now Wills is at second. A run is in. And a 1-1 count to Sunberg. Right hand, you're ready. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. Two and one. If I were a Texas Ranger, I think I'd be up there looking for a fastball on every pitch. Obviously, you're not going to get it on every pitch, but how about 90%? Right-hander ready. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to left field. Gar drifting over to his left. He's there, and he's got it, and that retires the side. So in the inning, the Rangers come up with one run on two hits, both doubles, and one man left on. We're at the end of two complete innings of play. It's Texas 1, the White Sox nothing. That melody you hear Says that pleasure's near From one dear lover to another strokes So play that friendly sound Pass that great taste around Real dear lovers know That the Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. It's The Sound of Music, starring Shirley Jones. Coming to the Airy Crown Theater McCormick Place for two weeks only, August 23rd through September 4th. Good seats are still available. Individual tickets are now on sale for The Sound of Music at the Airy Crown box office, all Ticketron outlets, Sears and Ward stores. For phone reservations, call 791-6000. At 791-6000. Lauren Brown back at Arlington Stadium as we go to the third inning. The White Sox trailing here by a score of one to nothing. We'll send Eric Sauter home, Jim Essien, and Ralph Gard to the plate. The eight, nine hitters and the number one hitter in the White Sox order tonight. This afternoon, the first game of a doubleheader, Dennis Eckersley tossed a one-hitter as Cleveland beat Milwaukee two to nothing. They're all tied up in the second game, 1-1 at the end of three. Eric Soderholm hitting 290, 17 homers and 49 RBIs. Doc Ellis on the mound allowed a pair of singles in the second inning, but got out of it when he served up a double play ball to Chet Lemon. Here's the first pitch, and it's a fastball inside, ball one. Detroit trailing Minnesota 7-3 in the bottom of the second. They've been out for a long time in that second. Here's the pitch, and it's inside ball two. Kansas City and Toronto are tied up 4-4 at the end of four. In that Eastern Division battle, Boston is winning big. Baltimore is tied up 1-1 at the end of five with Oakland. Here's the 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss on a fastball. And the Yankees hammered California in the first game of a doubleheader 10-1 and lead in the second 3-2 in the bottom of the first or bottom of the third of that second game. Two balls and a strike to Soderholm. Outfield plays him straight away, bunching up the middle. Here's a swing and a shot down the left field line. Might be in there for extra bases. May cuts it off in the corner. Keith Smith does. Here goes Soderholm headed for second. The throw is too late, and he is sliding in safely with a double. 
They punched him toward the middle, and he pulled the ball down the left field line that Keith Smith, the rookie, got right before it hit the wall. And Soderholm goes into second with a double, and that is the first extra base hit that the White Sox have had in the last two nights. The last extra base hit they had was two nights ago, which was a double by Gar. Last night, they did not get an extra base hit. It was only the third time this year at Comiskey Park that the Sox had not gotten at least one extra base hit. So Jim Essie in the batter hitting 274, eight homers and 39 RBIs. Right-hander out of the stretch delivers, and it's low inside a ball. Ellis has been falling behind everybody here tonight. The White Sox now for the second time in as many innings have a runner at second. Right-hander ready. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And it's a strike in the inside part of the plate. One ball and one strike. One to nothing. Texas out in front. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Strike at the knees. Essien doesn't like it and steps out of the box. He's in the hole one and two as Ralph Gar waits in the on-deck circle. These two clubs have played five games here this year, and three of the five have been decided by one run. Right-hander ready, the one-two pitch, inside a ball, two and two. Kansas City just scored two more in the fifth to jump out in front of Toronto, six to four, but Doug Alt for Toronto has just hit his tenth home run of the year in the fifth with nobody on, so it's at least six to five now with Toronto still batting in the fifth. Splitorf against Lemanchek. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Inside a ball and the count is full now. Three balls and two strikes. A capacity crowd here tonight. That wind has shifted now. Instead of going straight out, it's going to right field. From the left field foul line out to right, 15 to 20 miles an hour. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder to the shortstop. Campanaris holds the runner at second and throws Essie and out. Oh, there's one out, and the batter is Ralph Gar, who grounded out to second his first time up tonight. Ralph has not been his old aggressive self of late. He says he's been taking more pitches than he'd like, and he says every time I take a pitch, it's right down the middle. And he says when he starts taking pitches, he has a tendency not to be as aggressive as he was earlier. Right hand, you're ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul ball down the right side. They said all of a sudden you get two strikes on you and you're hardly aggressive at all. You're just trying to meet the ball. One to nothing. Rangers out in front. White Sox about hit Texas. Three to two. We'll have the second game out here tomorrow night when Steve Stone goes to the mound for the White Sox against Burt Blylevin. Right hand, you're ready. Here's the pitch to Gar, and it's outside a ball. Evens the count one and one. Lou Brock has just stolen his 22nd base of the year, his 887th in his career, and needs but six more to break Ty Cobb's record. Right-hander ready. Here's the one-one pitch. Swing and a foul to the right side. Goes on into the Texas dugout. A ball and two strikes to Gar. The tying run at second base with one out after a leadoff double by Soderholm. Ellis out of the stretch delivers. And he went after an inside pitch and fouled it straight back. Ralph, a 300 hitter coming into tonight's game. Ellis ready, down at the waist. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That's the first strikeout for Ellis. So now there are two out with a runner at second. Pirates and Mets did not score in the first inning of the second game with a doubleheader after Pittsburgh won the opener 3-2. to two.
Bannister grounded out to third his first time up. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. And it's inside a ball. Last night, the White Sox went into that game against Cleveland. They had six of the nine players hitting over 300. Three hitting over 300 coming into tonight's game. Two more hitting over 290. Here's the pitch. And couldn't hold up. Goes around for a strike. Tried to check his swing, but couldn't, and went all the way around. Evens the count up at one and one. The White Sox hitting 280 against the Rangers this year, 13 homers and 58 RBIs. Rangers, however, hitting 304 against the Sox with 11 homers and 69 RBIs. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Here's a strike. Here's a throw down to second, and Soderholm slides back in safely as Sunberg tries to catch Soderholm napping, but he didn't. So now the count one ball and two strikes to Bannister. A leadoff double by Soderholm. Now he is at second with two out. Right-hander ready. The one-two pitch inside a ball. The lone run, or the home run by Alda, I should say, was the lone run that Toronto got in the fifth. So it's Kansas City six, Toronto five at the end of five. That game at Toronto. Right-hander ready. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So a leadoff double by Soderholm, and Ellis does not allow the White Sox to get out of the ball out of the infield after that. Getting Essie into ground out to short on a 3-2 pitch, and then coming back to strike out Gar and Bannister. No runs, one hit, one man left on. We go to the bottom of the third. It's Texas 1, the White Sox nothing. Round table. Native dancer. Nashua. Equipoise. Citation. Secretariat. In 50 years of championship racing, Arlington Park has hosted them all. Buck Passer and Dr. Fager ran to world records here. Whirlaway, Kelso, and Seabiscuit were upset. Now in our golden anniversary season, more great thoroughbreds are racing at Arlington Park. Come celebrate with us all summer long and see racing history in the making. Saturday at Arlington Park, you'll see outstanding three-year-olds run on the turf. It's the second race in the famous Mid-America Triple, the $75,000 added round table handicap. Don't miss the action in this classic event at historic Arlington Park. Arlington Park. We're starting another half century of racing history. Lauren Brown back at Arlington, Texas as we go to the bottom half of the third inning. The Rangers out in front on a pair of doubles in the second inning, one to nothing. Francisco Barrios on the mound for the White Sox will face the number nine hitter in the order, rookie Keith Smith. He'll be followed by Hargrove and Campaneris. Smith hitting an even 200 since being called up from Tucson. Four hits and 20 times at bat. Here's the first pitch to him, and a swing and a miss, strike one. Two double headers in the American League, California at New York and Milwaukee at Cleveland. Yankees won the first game over California, 10-1. to one. Cleveland beat Milwaukee 2 to nothing in the first game on a one-hitter by Dennis Eckersley. One double header in the National League. The Pirates beat the Mets 3-2 to two in the first game. The second game, no score at the end of one. Here's a pitch high and away a ball. Well, now we get another correction. <laughs> Toronto, here's the pitch outside of ball. Kansas City got two in the fifth, but so did Toronto. So instead of six to five, Kansas City, it's tied up. Six, six, Toronto and Kansas City. Right-hander delivers. Here's the pitchers. A swing and a smash between the legs of Barrios in the center field of base hit. That is the third hit off of Barrios, and it's the first time tonight the Rangers have got their leadoff man on. The 
Mike Hargrove, the batter, flying out to center field his first time up. As we mentioned, that wind has shifted. Instead of blowing straight out, it is going directly out to right field from the left field foul line. Barrios has just shaken off Essien a couple of times. Here's the pitch runner not going. A swing and a foul down the left side as he got jammed and he muscled that ball. <laughs> a fan reached up to get it and he hit the ball as if he were hitting a volleyball. It went down about eight rows and a fan grabbed it easily. Hey, we want to say hello to a Dick Dion from Burlington, Vermont. A White Sox fan who picks up our White Sox games out in Vermont every night. Glad to have you with us. Barrios ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a pop-up going on out to short right field. Zisk racing in. He's there and he's got it for the first out of the inning. Zisk got to come a long way. Hauls it in for the first out and Campanaris is the batter. Veteran shortstop, signed as a free agent with Texas. Now batting. Shortstop. First, have another. Bounced out to the pitcher his first time up. Well, let's see. What do we get out of Detroit? Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball inside. Detroit did not score in the second. However, Minnesota came up with five more in the third. Rod Carew hit a grand slam homer. Well, I'll tell you, the Tigers, we're about the only team they can beat. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a miss, strike one. Against the White Sox, Detroit won six and lost four. only two games over 500 but they're not playing that well against anybody else in the West I don't believe so it's Minnesota out in front 12 to 3 in the bottom of the third at Tiger Stadium that was Carew's 11th home run of the year one ball one strike in the batter one out here's the pitch a bunt popped up to the right side Barrios has it He's out, throw to second double play. Nice job by Barrios as he slipped and fell as he caught it. Threw to Lamar Johnson as Smith was off, and it's a double play. So the bunning of Texas does not work that time. You're scoring along with us. Campanaris is out of the bunt attempt. One over to the first baseman, a 1-3 double play. And that retires the side. So no runs, one hit. Nobody left on. We're at the end of three. I'm Lauren Brown. Harry Carey will be along in a minute. It's Texas one, the White Sox nothing. We're a lot like you. We are a lot like you. We feel the thrill of Comiskey Park as the White Sox slug their way to the American League pennant. We even love the hot dogs. We're a lot like you at Chicago Savings and Loan. That's why we've made White Sox tickets more convenient. Come to any Chicago Savings office and order the best seats available. It's our way of saying, we're with you, Chicago. Yes, Mr. Obnayakopi. And it helps us hear you. Call 476-7575 for the office nearest you in Darien, Des Plaines, on North Avenue and Southwestern. At Chicago Savings and Loan, we're a lot like you. Member FSLIC. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey. Back in Arlington, Texas, where the White Sox are trailing one to nothing. We go to the top of the fourth. Here's George Order to lead it off. He bounced out his first time. Doc Ellis. There's a pitch bunted foul off to the left. Strike one. One strike or nothing. Dick Smith and his wife Mildred. White Sox fans on the north side of Chicago. 
We're here tonight with friends pulling for a White Sox victory. Now the sign. Orta takes a curveball outside. Tomorrow at noon, the Spirit of 77 Dance Marathon to raise funds for the special children's charities gets underway at Faces. Errors a pitch low, ball two. Public is invited. The Gold Coast Art Fair gets started, too, tomorrow. Bouncing ball foul. Two balls, two strikes. One to nothing in favor of the Rangers. George Orta waiting. Doc Ellis gets set. 2-2 two -two pitch. Bouncing ball foul again. Rod Carew hit a grand slam. And Minnesota's murdering Detroit. 12 to 3. Now the pitch. High pop foul back into the stand. Cleveland shut out Milwaukee 2 to nothing in the first game and leads 2 to 1 in the fourth inning of the second game. Now the signal. The pitch on the way. There's a base hit to right field. Or to single sharply to right. Single right is first time at bat. California and the Yankees are tied 3-3 in the fifth inning of the second game after the Yankees won the first game. 10 to 1. Richie's this, the batter. Runner at first, nobody out. Now the stretch, the pitch, low into the dirt. Nice stop by Sunberg, the pride of Galesburg. Boy, oh boy, that kid has raised his average to 285. He's driven in 43 runs. Now the sign. Doc Ellis steps off the rubber. Bergmeier has gone in to pitch for Minnesota in the third. Minnesota out a 12 to 3 lead. Now the stretch, the pitch, fly ball in the center field, easy out. Waiting for it, Claudel Washington. All right, when was the last time this drove in a run? Oscar Gamble, one out, one on. The pitch. Swung, double play ball to the second baseman. Bump Will's only play will be a fourth out. Gamble bounced into a force play. Bump Will's to Campy Campanera. That's two away now. Johnson single to center his first time at bat. Now the stretch, the pitch. There's another base hit in the left center field. Here's Gamble around second. He's going to go for third. Here's Keith Smith's throw. Save! 
So Lamar Johnson makes it two out of two with a single to left center. And Oscar Gamble went all the way around to third. The last time Zisk drove in a run was August the 2nd, and he drove it in on a ground ball. Here's Lemon with runners at first and third, two out. Lemon hitting to a double play to end the second inning. One to nothing in favor of the Rangers. Now the stretch by Doc Ellis, the pitch. Right in there, a beauty of strike off. McRae has just hit a homer for Kansas City with a man on. And they have a big lead now on Toronto. Nine, not such a big lead, nine to six. Here's the stretch, the pitch to Lemon. Held up in time, the fastball is low. Red Sox lead Seattle 6-2 to two at the end of five. A ball and a strike. Chet Lemon trying to bring these men home. Now the stretch, the pitch. Here it is. Ground ball, nice play by Toby Harris. Diving stop, and he throws the second for the force line. No run, two hit, no errors, two left. We go into the bottom of the fourth to score. The Rangers won. White Sox, nothing. Notice anything different about your car lately? Fill her up. Like maybe it's not running real well? Fill her up. Could be those old spark plugs. Fill her up with champions. Pull out the old, plug in the new. If you're waiting for a tune-up to change plugs, you could just be waiting too long. A fresh set of Champion spark plugs alone could give your car faster starts and more passing power. So why wait? Fill her up with Champions, world's number one seller. Fill her up, fill her up, fill her up with Champions. Pull out the old, plug in the new. Harry Carey back in Arlington. The White Sox are wasting some opportunities. They had runners on first and second with one out in the second inning. Lemon rolled into a double play. Soderholm led off the third inning with a double. Next three men were easy out. Orta led off with a single here in the fourth. Then we had runners at first and third with Lemon up. And Harrow made a nice play and threw for a force play. Now it's the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's Claudel Washington. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball in there. A strike off. Minnesota 12, Detroit 5 at the end of three. On the side. The pitch on the way. Slider a little bit inside. You know, the White Sox hit six homers in one game and beat Seattle 13-3. to three. Tuesday night. There's a pitch foul back. Since then, they have made one run in 23 innings. Made two runs, rather, in 23 innings. One run in each game against Cleveland. Here's Claudel Washington. Two strikes and a ball. The pitch. Hey! Struck him out. Washington goes down swinging. That's one gone, brings up Tom Greve, the designated hitter. Designated hitter. Remember the first Tom Irish Green. family night at the amphitheater at 43rd and Halston Monday night, starting at 7 o'clock. A tribute to the late Honorable Richard J. Daly, Eddie Hanley of the Bartenders Union, and Pat o O'Malley, our chairman, sponsored by the combined I. Irish clubs of Chicago. That's Monday night at the amphitheater. Here's a pitch. Grieve swings and he fouls it back. 
A ball and a strike. The Phillies wallop the Cubs 10-3 to to knock them into third place. While the Pirates nose out the Mets 3-2 to in the first game. No score in the second yet. Here's the pitch to Grieve inside. Almost hit him. It did hit him. A real glancing blow. Bill Rickleman, well-known lawyer from Oak Park, Illinois, here with his family. And John Nowell, cheering for the White Sox. So is the Jebson family from Blue Island. Here's Davy May, a runner at first. Here's the pitch. And it's a little bit outside. Ball up. Steve Wilkin from Pontiac, Illinois. The Dorton family from Michigan City are here. John Metternack from Aurora. So the White Sox have a lot of their fans here. Davey May doubled and scored their only run. Ball outside. Allen Eleanor Smith, who are down at Sarasota watching all the spring training games, are here pulling for the White Sox tonight. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch, and it's outside, ball three. Reggie Jackson has hit his 20th home run of the year for the Yankees. Ray balls, no strikes. There's the pitch, spy call. Bonnie and Tom Smith and their son Tony from Rockford, Illinois are here. Three balls and a strike. Now the pitch, here it is. Strike. Two call. He hit the outside corner. Peter Stein from Carpentersville with his son John here. And his brother Joe Stein from Dundee. Also here. Now the stretch, there goes the runner, the pitch. High fly ball, deep center field, way back as Lemon near the wall, makes the catch. And Grieve, who would run all the way down to second base, returned easily. Two gone, here's Toby Harris. Kurt Janis of Riverside, Illinois. And two former Chicagoans, Ernie and Marion Linton, who are retired now. Living in Gun Barrel City, Texas. That's got to be one of my favorite towns. Gun Barrel City. Tommy Harrod, the batter. Quick throw to first, the runner back. One to nothing in favor of the Rangers. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Now to stretch the pitch. Curve of beauty, a strike call. Boy, that was a good pitch. White Sox return home one week from Monday when they face the Yankees. Now the pitch to Toby Hara, a little bit low. White Sox will be home. Monday night, August the 22nd, and Tuesday night, August the 23rd, to play the Yankees. Well, what a funny schedule. Now the stretch, here's the pitch. Strike over the outside corner. Barrios with good stuff tonight. Two strikes and a ball. He made one mistake. He hung a slider to bump wheels. After Davey May had hit a bloop double to left. Two strikes and a ball. The pitch. Sidearmed him and he fouled it back. You know, the White Sox come home Monday night, August the 22nd to play the Yankees. Again, Tuesday night, the 23rd. Then they go to Baltimore the 24th and 25th. And then return back for a weekend series against Milwaukee. And then go back to Cleveland. 
You hardly have time to unpack your suitcase. Now to stretch the pitch. And it's a little high. Two balls, two strikes. A runner at first, two away. One to nothing, the Rangers. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast, wherever you might be listening. There's the pitch. Oh, come out swinging. Toby Harris goes down swinging. No run, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of four, Rangers one, White Sox nothing. Hold on here, folks. I want to talk to you right here. I want to talk to you about the Hotsy Totsy on Division Off State, which is a favorite late stop for me. Gary owns the place as a live young guy who runs a good shop, and his banana daiquiris are the best in town. So you see, I don't stop in there only for Stroh's beer, but the clientele at the Hotsy Totsy is young and active and largely beer drinkers. And it's really a kick to go in there and see so many enjoying so much Stroh's. They are young and great sports fans. Some are primarily Bears fans. Some are strictly Cubs. And I'm happy to report many are Sox fans. As a matter of fact, the Hotsy Totsy frequently sponsors busloads to Comiskey Park. But the point is that Stroh's in such a short time has become a big part of the Chicago sports scene. Liked both by the young and the old. Stroh's family brewers for more than 200 years. At the end of four, the score Rangers won, White Sox nothing. WMAQ. We're your radio station, and that means we're always looking for new things to do for you. That's the reason we ask you to call us at 591-4000 and tell us what you want. That's also the reason we bring you the big singers live in concert. It's also why we give away big money and prizes, including color TVs, cars, and stereos. We share the money with you, and of course, we play the music you ask for. And we've got more new things on the way. We're here for you. Your radio station, WMAQ. Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall. Here's Eric Soderholm on the first pitch, lifting a lazy fly ball. Claudel Washington has it. One gone. Soderholm pops to Washington in short center. One away. Well, I don't know whether it's pressure or what. Our hitters have very little patience. Man, they're swinging at that first pitch. It's all right when you hit it, I guess. You only notice it when you don't hit it. Here's Hessian. Well, there's got to be a reason when you're not succeeding. <laughs> this is what they always say. <laughs> no matter if it's baseball or anything else. First pitch to Hessian is low. I don't think they have to worry about Ellis overpowering him. One out, nobody on, the pitch. Strike call. That evens the count of the ball and a strike. We're on the top of the fifth with the Rangers out in front, one to nothing. Doc Ellis delivers. Swings, and he fouled tip strike two. Two strikes and a ball. They welcome Monty Stratton, former White Sox pitcher, about whom the great movie was, movie was made, as was one made about Jimmy Pearsall. Oh, a weak swing, and Essien pops it up. The shortstop, Campanaris, is there. Two gone. Harry, weren't you broadcasting when Stratton was pitching? No, I don't remember him, uh, Jimmy. You don't remember him? No, I don't. Oh, I... I thought you were asking me serious. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. When did he pitch? He pitched in the 30s with this, uh, before Dean, I think, even. Two men are out. Here's Gar. Doc Ellis has allowed five hits, no run. Barrios has permitted three hits, one of them just a bloop, but one run. Fastball outside. I'd like to mention the Minnesota game. Minnesota got seven in the second, five in the third. Detroit got three in the first, two in the third, and two in the fourth. It's 12 to seven. They may be there all night. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. Two men are out. Are you ready for the home run? Fuentes in the fifth. <laughs> fourth with one on. You know, Rod Carew hit a grand slam. 
in the third. Now Ellis is ready to pitch to Gars on the way. Here it is. There's the line shot in the center field right at Claudel Washington. That ball was hit hard right at him. One, two, three, nothing across. We go into the bottom of the fifth. Rangers one, White Sox nothing. Put a little Chevy in your life. It's a giant small car silicon. Your Chevy dealer is really anxious to give you a goodbye on a small Chevrolet now. During Chevrolet's giant small car silicon. Get a Chevy, get a car, you're gonna lie. Chevy Chevette's got the highest EPA gas mileage rating of any car built in America. Chevette, with its available 1.6 liter engine and standard transmission, is EPA rated at 43 miles a gallon highway 31 city. That's an estimate your mileage will vary. But 43 highway 31 city, that's terrific. Put a little Chevy in your life. It's a giant small car silicone. Chevy Mons is rated at 33 miles a gallon highway 24 city with standard four-cylinder engine and manual transmission. So get a Chevy, get a car, you're gonna lie. Right now, America, at your Chevrolet dealer. It's a giant small car silicone. You'll love it. Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall, and we're going now into the bottom of the fifth. Man, this is a snappy ball game. The score one to nothing in favor of the Rangers. They scored in the second. With one on me, dropped a short fly, dump, fly ball double and left. And with two out, Bump Will, who had looked bad on two pitches, lined a double into the right field corner. For the 32nd time this year, somebody's hit a two-strike pitch to hurt it. Here's Bump Wells, who got that two-strike double. Now the pitch, and it's a little bit low, ball one. One ball, no strike. Quite a sight here, Harry, with the stands filled. Oh, I'll say it is. Hey, how to cut him in. Boy, this kid's going to be a real good hitter. I think it's a tribute to the mayor of this city who went out on the limb to bring this team in. There's, you know, the population here is 138,000 people in this little town. Now the pitch, here it is. Lined in the center, a base hit for Bob Wells. I say going to be a great hitter. He's already a good one, and he, he's a rookie. I'll tell you one thing, he won't let that breaking ball up in his eyes pass. Well, let's see if they put here. Don Kellis' last inning was timed at 85 miles per hour on his fastball. Barrios at 91. Here's Sunberg. Flat out to left his first time. Here's Barrios' pitch. He's going to bunt, and he bunts foul for a strike. An ideal pitch, Harry, high and inside, a tough ball to handle. And that lets you know what they're going to do, and sometimes the guy will chase it. The Yankees came up with four runs in the sixth inning. They now lead California 7-3. to three. So the Yankees are on their way to a double victory. One strike to nothing. Now the stretch. The pitch on the way. He bumps foul back. Strike two. Two strikes and nothing. Now, having failed a sacrifice, be alert for the hit run. I want to tell you right now, those two fastballs that he threw are the best fastballs he's thrown tonight. He zapped, they exploded. Runner at first. Nobody out. But Minnesota out in front. The White Sox need a victory to hold on to first place. There's a fastball high. Yankees, who beat the Angels 10-1 to in the first game, lead 7-3 to at the end of six in the second game. Two strikes on the ball. Bump Wills edging off base. Sunberg waiting. There's the pitch a little bit outside. Just barely missed that strike zone. Two balls, two strikes. The right hand hitter waiting.
Barrios getting set. The outfield straight away and deep. Sunberg has been on a good batting tear. Now the pitch. There goes a the runner. Foul back. And they'll have to return. See, they were waiting to get that hit and run until he got two and two. <laughs> One to nothing. The Rangers are leading. Now Sunberg takes a look at Connie Ryan coaching third. Two balls, two strikes. There's a pitch inside ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Half of the batting order will soon be up there. Keith Smith is next, a ninth place hitter. Three balls, two strikes on Sunberg. Barrios is set. Bump Wills edging off the bag. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch. There he goes, ball four. He had him two strikes and nothing. Wound up walking. Now they have another man coming up who's going to bunt, or try to. Keith Smith. I wish he'd have bunted. Yeah, I do, too. Sider home talking now to Barrios. As to what's going to happen if it's bunted down the third baseline. Now the Rangers have a situation. Keith Smith, the batter. They're expecting him to bunt. Here's the pitch. He squares around. He bunts it foul for a strike. One strike to nothing. Score one to nothing, but the Rangers have runners at first and second and nobody out. Ball game in the fifth. Now the signal given. Infield in, expecting the bunt. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch. He's going to bunt. A high hopper off the plate. The only play, first base. And Elsian threw it too high. Everybody is safe. And Barrio stands there with both hands on his hip. He got out of the way to give Elstian the chance to, to take it because Elstian was yelling he had it. A high bouncing butt off the plate. And now they have the bases loaded, nobody out. And Aaron will be charged to Elstian. Elstian didn't set himself. He threw up in the air. And when he threw it, he tried to throw it over the runner's head. Threw it too high for order to handle Here's Hargrove now. Twice he has flied out. The infield's going to play back. The Rangers now with a chance to blow the game wide open. The pitch. Stop to the third. Whoa, they almost had him. Whoa, they almost had Bump Will. One ball, no strikes. Activity in the bullpen. Dave Hamilton to the left-hander. Now the pitch here it is. Smash, foul outside first. A ball and a strike. Doesn't this guy ever pop up? A ball and a strike. Mark Johnson and Dave Hamilton are down the bullpen. A ball and a strike. And a stretch. The pitch. 
Strike two called over the outside corner at the knee. Two strikes on the ball. Campaneris would be next. The bases are loaded. One of their best hitters up there, Mike Hargrove. The five homers, 40 runs batted in. Infield playing back. Now Barrios is ready. Here's the pitch on the way. Whoa, where was that? Boy, don't call him out. Boy, Come Barrios, on, Marty. Come on, Marty. The crowd, oh, the crowd by the end. Boy, he got a break there, Hargrove. Woo. That pitch could have gone either way, I guess. Barrios was, sure thought it was a strike. Two balls, two strikes. Hargrove digging in. Left-hand hitter. Got to get him on this pitch. Now the stretch. Here it is. Ball three. Barrios trying to reach back for a little extra. Stumbled off the mound and certainly didn't have control of himself on that pitch and he got away from him. Now the count is full, nobody out, base is loaded. Now the signal given. Three balls, two strikes. Left hand hit away. Here's the big pitch coming up. Here it is. Bouncing ball. The only play will be the first base, a run score. Two to nothing now. And that brings up Campanera. Can you imagine how they've got the run this inning? I want to tell you. One ball hit, halfway decent. Wills gets the single to center. Then Sunberg trying to butt has two quick strikes. Barrios wound up walking. The sacrifice by Smith produced a high throw by Essien for the air. Now an infield roller. And now here's a tough cookie, Campanera. Pitch out, nobody going. One ball, no strike. Mario's still throwing good. He hasn't lost anything. He just got himself into a jam. The base on balls is Sundberg. Really, really hurt him. Bases. Are occupied at second and third. Here's a pitch fouled into the span. Into the dugout of the Rangers. I'd like to see how fast that pitch was up on that board. I'll bet you that was a good 95. A ball and a strike. Two to nothing now in favor of the Rangers. Who have runners at second and third. The infield comes in. The outfield is playing rel relatively shallow. Now the stretch. The pitch. Pitch out. Ball two. That's twice they pitched out. Well, if you're ever going to squeeze... Right this, now. This would be it. Two balls and a strike. Mario's looking right at Sunberg off the stretch. Sunberg being the runner at third. The pitch to Campanares. Here it is. Ball three. Claude Al Washington would be next. Right hand hitter waiting, three balls and a strike. The pitch, strike call. <laughs> Campanaris didn't like that at all. <laughs> three balls, two strikes. I'd rather have had the pitch to Hargrove. Hargrove, right. Now Barrios is ready. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch on the way. Stop him out. Campanaris goes down swinging. Here's Claudel Washington. I'll tell you right now, Harry, he is bumping. He really is. 
see if they're going to walk Washington to get to the right-hand hitter, Grieve. Last time he faced him, he struck him out three times at home. Now he struck him out once tonight. I wonder whether they'll walk him or not. Let's see. They haven't indicated yet. Yep, they're going to walk him to pitch to Grieve. No, take it back now because Essien, I guess he's just giving the two-out signal. Claudel Washington, a left-hand hitter to stretch. The pitch on the way, and it's inside. His first base open, boy. He doesn't want to give him anything good to hit. One ball, no strikes. 36,852. A sellout. A few people sitting on top of each other. Here's the pitch. A little tap right back to the mound. And he tags the runner coming into the plate. Mario, a good fielding play as he charged towards the line to feel the top ball. He just kept running towards the runner, Sunberg, and tagged him out to retire the side. I've never seen that before. He really charged at him. He hit him good. So he is out, Sunberg. Barrios unassisted. Only one run scored out of all that. And boy, oh boy, if he'd have called that third strike on Hargrove, he pitches his way out of it. One run, a leadoff hit was the only hit. One air, two left. At the end of five, the Rangers two, the White Sox nothing. True Value Hardware Stores think there should be 60 feet in every yard, so they're offering the True Test 60-foot vinyl garden hose for your yard for just $6.99. It's 60 feet long to make it easier to water your lawn, shrubs, garden, or even wash your car. It's nylon reinforced for strength. It stays flexible in all temperatures, and its solid brass couplings won't rust. Get the True Test 60-foot nylon reinforced vinyl hose with 5 8 inch inside diameter for just $6.99. Or choose the True Test 60 foot rubber hose from True Value Hardware Stores. It's made of strong flexoline rubber that coils easily and it's reinforced for greater burst strength. See the complete selection of True Test garden hoses exclusively at participating True Value Hardware Stores. True Value Hardware, it's more than just a name. It's our way of keeping your home clean. Let's pause for our station identification. This is WMAQ Chicago. WMAQ. Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall, and we're going into the top of the sixth, and Alan Bannister will be leading it off. Toronto is trying to help us. They're battling. Kansas City got 2-2-2-3, two, 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 and Toronto's got 1-3-2-0-2, two, 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 and it's now... <laughs> nine, uh, let's see, five, seven, nine, eight. <laughs> Favor of Kansas City. Here's Alan Bannister. He's nothing out of two. Here's the pitch. There's a fly ball to the left center field, and here's Claudel Washington. Not able to make the catch. It's rolling in the wall. Bannister's around second. He's on his way to third. He may try. He's going to hold up with a triple. Claudel Washington dives through the air. Looked like he had reached the ball, but it went through his arm and rolled to the center field wall where Keith Smith recovered it. Harry, not being a center fielder, he needed to dove for the ball. He could have just stuck his glove out and caught it. And the worst thing you can do when you're playing center field is start diving because you wind up with triples and home runs inside the park. Miss Arlington is coming down the line. That's my date. <laughs> you should be so lucky. <laughs> I've been, here's here, I've been here for four years, Harry. I know, you've got a good book here. <laughs> Let's get this running, Harry. Stop fooling around. A runner at third, nobody out. Now the pitch to Orta. Strike over the outside corner. A fastball. One strike and nothing. A runner at third, Bannister with a triple. Now Doc Ellis winds the pitch. Inside, a slider, and the count is even. A ball on a strike. If I give you something, you hand it back to me. What an Indian giver. What is this? Now the pitch. 
Wide ball two. Zisk would be next. Come on, George. Orts has single the right in the fourth. He's one out of two. Two balls and a strike. Doc Ellis getting ready. Two to nothing in favor of the Rangers. Now the wind up the pitch on the way. Here it is. Ooh, he jammed him and he just barely tapped the ball foul. The count evens up. Two balls, two strikes. To carry your milk this around a, in. What do they call us? This ba- is a uh, one of those bags that you carry your gear in. Bag pack. Back, back pack. Yeah. Very good, Harry. Two <laughs> balls, two strikes. Order waiting. Doc Ellis is set. The 2-2 pitch. Here it is. There's a drive. If it stays fair. Foul by inches. Holy cow. Well, oh, you got to be lucky, too, in this game. That's the same pitch that he looked so bad swinging on a moment ago. At that time, he jerked it down the line. Boy, that would have been a double tying run. Would have been a second, maybe even a triple. Right down the line, hit like a bullet. Let's, two balls, two strikes. Let's just get the run in the infields back. Boy, Hardgrove's playing deep. Two to nothing in favor of the Rangers. They've done it with mirrors tonight. Now Doc Ellis is ready. The 2-2 pitch. Here it is. A little squibber, but it's foul off to the left of the plate. Aren't you amazed how a guy can swing so hard and hit it two feet? <laughs> he just barely kicked that ball. Adrian Devine is down in the bullpen, the right-hander. Knowles. And Knowles. Darryl Knowles, the left-hander. And there goes Sundberg out to talk to Doc Ellis. And it's lightning to our left. And thundering to our right. right. And Miss Texas's and Miss Arlington's and Miss Dallas's keep walking back and forth. It's a great, wide, wonderful world. Two balls, two strikes. Now Ellis is ready. Here's a big pitch. High pop fly. Let's see if Bannister's going to score. There's a catch. Here he comes. Oh, there's a wild throw. But he goes by. He had stopped to go back. So we still have a runner at third, not one out. Boy. Well, my opinion of the play, Harry, is this, that he wasn't too deep. I don't know whether they know what kind of an arm he's got or not. A guy with that ball. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know that when you're on third. You have to have one guess or not. And it's uh, with nobody out, you sure don't want to take yourself out of an inning. So I got to believe I'd have stayed there if I was a runner. So there's one away. A runner at third. Here's this. He dribbled a single right in the second, and he flied out to center in the fourth. Oscar Gamble would be next. Here's the pitch. Swings, and he fouled, tipped off his toes. Strike one. <laughs> this hasn't driven in a run since August the 2nd. So, boy, he is due. Slider outside. So he's been 10 games without driving in a run. Here's a sh- a big one here to get. A ball and a strike. One out, a runner at third. Doc Ellis's pitch. Curve outside. Two balls and a strike. Boy, Ellis throwing him nothing but breaking ball. Two balls and a strike. Infield playing back. Now the pitch. Here it is. There it goes. Way back. It might be. It could be. It is. A tie score. Holy cow. Richie just came through. When the White Sox really needed it, boy. And this game is tied. And he saved that RBI for a most opportune time. 
This game is tied. And here's Oscar Gamble, who can put us ahead in a hurry. I think he ought to hit, hit himself on the toe all the time. He really got him mad. He was furious. You know, I, I think I mentioned that he had thrown him a series of curveball, breaking balls. Now he was going to slip the fastball by him, and Richie was ready. Here's a pitch to Gamble, and he had a cut, and he missed. So it's all tied up 2-2. We're in the top of the sixth. Zisk has regained the team lead in homers with 23. There's a fastball low and away. Minnesota 12, Detroit 9 after 6. Fighter Blue lost again today. He's 10 and 15. And Palmer is 13 and 10. If he was having a good year, boy, they'd be really out in front. There's a long drive. Way back. Might be. Could be. Here's his, and the Woo! Sox lead. Holy cow. I told you here's a guy that could... Unlock the deadlock right after this gamble hits one. And what a towering home run this one was. Halfway up into the right field bleacher. The only one I've ever seen come close to that drive was Mayberry. That ball was hit, and I've watched four years of baseball. He really popped that ball with his wrist. You know, the Davy May didn't even didn't even bust. He knew it was gone. What a towering smash. And the White Sox have taken the lead here. With their home run punch of Zisk and Gamble, who are still tied for the team lead. The only difference is now they're tied at 23 instead of 22. Okay. So Ellis goes five innings and gives up three runs and eight hits. He struck out one, two, and he didn't walk anybody. And Adrian Devine comes in, their best reliever. He's won eight, lost five. This will be his 41st appearance. His ERA is 2.93. He started one game. He's got 10 saves. He's pitched 76 innings, given up 70 hits, 26 runs, 25 earned runs, 7 home runs, 24 bases on balls, 45 strikeouts. He's hit one bat. Jimmy, uh... There's some White Sox fans here, and they're... What are you standing up for? Well, I because I wanted to catch them while they were trying to sing this song. They're going, na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey, hey. goodbye. Want me to hum or something like that? <laughs> but they're trying to sing it with, and it's tough to sing it without Nancy Faust here. All right, the White Sox have taken the lead, three to two. And Adrian Devine will be facing Lamar Johnson here. The score three to two now in the sixth inning. Now the signal given. The pitch. Curveball a little bit inside. Three to two White Sox. There's a curve. He swings and he misses. Adrian Devine. I think this guy's been in every game we played Texas. Yeah, I'm trying to look up. We hit it pretty hard. A ball and a strike. Now the signal given. Now to wind up the pitch. Here it is. Bouncing ball to short. Campanaris has it. There's the peg in time. Who gone? Here's Chet Lemon now. White Sox with a triple and two homers in this inning have taken the lead three to two. Long way to go, of course. Remember, Adrian Devine pitched brilliantly for the Rangers, and then they, they came in in an extra inning and got six. The White Sox came back, got four, knocked out Adrian Devine, had the tying run at the plate with only one out before they were finally stopped. Detroit just came up with two more runs in the sixth inning. It's nine, 12 to nine in favor of Minnesota. Here's Lemon, the first pitch in there, a breaking ball for a strike call. Two men are out, nobody on base. Adrian Devine is ready to pitch to Chet Lemon. Here it is. Swung and he missed. Two strikes and nothing. Lemon, who saved 
The White Sox are being shut out for the first time this year last night with a two-out single. And hit it to right field on the line, but he gets to swing it so hard, he loves to hit that home run with his towel. <laughs> two strikes and nothing. Now the pitch. Outside a breaking ball. Adrian Devine. With an earned run average of 2.93. Eight victories, ten saves. Two strikes on the ball, the windup, here's the pitch. Struck him out, a slider on the outside corner. Lemon is caught out on strike. Three runs, he's arguing about that one. I don't blame him. No errors, nobody left. We go now into the bottom of the six. It's the White Sox three, the Rangers two. your Zenith dealer and take a look at the picture you get on Zenith Chroma Color 2 with EVG, Electronic Video Guard Tuning. EVG helps keep the Zenith picture sharp and clear for years, not just when the TV sets new. With EVG, you get direct positive signal reception every time you select a channel. Zenith Electronic Video Guard Tuning is featured on selected models in every Zenith screen size category. So see your Zenith dealer and ask for a demonstration. We've got something for everyone. Harry Carey with Jimmy Pearsall. We're going now into the bottom of the sixth inning. Tom Green will be leading it off. Right-handed batter. He'll be followed by Davey May and then Toby Hara. Boy, I tell you, that great job of getting out of so much trouble. He had the bases loaded with nobody out in the bottom of the fifth with the top of the batting order coming up. Hargrove, Campanaris, and Washington. And Barrios got out of it with only one run scoring. As a result, the two-run homer by Zisk and the solo homer by Gamble has turned it around now to where the White Sox are leading three to two. One ball, no strike. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, three to two, in favor of the White Sox. Barrios winds, a pitch to Gree. Swung and he missed. And that evens it up with a ball on the strike. This guy hitting right now can hit him as far as anybody on our club. So you've got to be careful with him. Tom Grave, he's made himself a dangerous hitter. The pitch, strike a breaking ball. Two strikes and the ball. We're in the sixth. Three to two in favor of the White Sox. Now the wind of the pitch. A half swing on a let up, and he fouled it off. He was really fooled. Way out in front. You know, one of these days, Barrios is going to be able to get that off steady, and he's going to be one of the best pitchers in the league. He is it right now, 11 and 4. Now the wind up the pitch. Bouncing ball to short. Bannister on a big hop. Whoa! Throws terribly. Oh, oh but a great play by Lamar Johnson. Woo. Oh, oh Alan. boy, Allen. You know what he did? He took and threw sidearm, and I mean, he threw that ball dead in the ground. Boy, Lamar Johnson made a Jim Spencer save.
Sahara, and it's a little bit low, ball one. Bump Wells, who's had two of their four hits, will be next. Both have been solid hits. The first one drove in their, their first run. Two men are out. The wind up the pitch, here it is. Swung on and foul. And it's evened up with a ball and a strike. The Rangers have batted 305 against the White Sox this year. The White Sox have batted 288 against the Rangers. They've had some wild slugging games. Ball and a strike, two out, nobody on. The pitch, here it is. Slider away, ball two. Dario still throwing very hard. Now ready. The pitch swung and popped foul back and out of play. I got it, Harry. I'll protect you, Jimmy. You can come out yeah. from under the counter. Uh, I'm all right, Harry. I got it. <laughs> all those pretty girls Good down there. Two strikes. This is America, Harry. <laughs> two away here in the sixth. White Sox have taken a three to two lead. Barrios is ready. Now the wind up the pitch. Here it is. Oh, boy. Ball he three. He Lemon out in a pitch. If that wasn't... They were walking off the field. They thought it was strike three. Three balls, two strikes. Now Barrios is ready. Here's the pitch. He walked it. The tying run is on with two up. Barrios, who does not keep the runner close to base, Better keep Hera because Hera can steal bases when you're he stole 25, and he is a good base runner. Here's Bump Wills. He's hit six homers this year. He has driven in 43 runs. 25-year-old rookie second baseman. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch. There he goes. There's a the peg. Save! Throw the ball over there. A stolen base. And the tying run is in scoring position. You know, when you watch a team as long as I've watched this team, you know what they're going to do. And it just seems like Barrios gets so involved with the plate and what he's going to throw, he doesn't throw over there anymore. Who's that guy with all those kids there? Looks uh, like he's throwing. He's, uh, he's a sell seller, and he, he whistles through his teeth, and he has all kinds of entertainment. He has oh. smoke comes out of his ears. He looks like the Pied Piper. Yeah, they all, all love him. All the kids following yeah, him. They around. love him. He's at all the football games, too. Two balls, no strikes. Bump Wills, the hitter. The tying run is... Now the signal given. Two balls, no strikes. Here it is. Ball three. And Sunberg would be up there next. Now he's not breaking his back, Harry. He's letting the ball go high. He's not losing anything, but he's just not extending himself a little bit. He's trying to get a little bit too easy out there. Three balls, no strikes. Be careful here. They might turn him loose. He's a good fastball hitter. There it is, ball four high. He missed not even close. Here comes Lemon. Bob Lemon walks out now to talk to Barrios. He got the first two men. He thought he had Harris struck out. It was called ball three, and the next pitch was ball four. Now he has walked Bump Wills. But the way Wills has hit him tonight, maybe that wasn't such a bad move at that. He's had a good night with the bat, and he seems to be a better left-handed hitter, Wills. He's hitting 287 left-handed compared to 255 right-handed. All right, now here's Sunburn. He's been the hot hitter. McGraw and Hamilton starting to hurry in that bullpen right now. Sunberg has been a 400 hitter against the White Sox. Two men are out. 
Terry, I can't believe that you guard the line on a hitter like Sundberg and give him all of center left field. There's the slider outside. Boy, they do give him a lot of room in left center. Lemon is trying to get his attention. My, come on. Now they're moving him over. over. One ball, no strikes. The delivery, foul back, and out of play. That evens it up, a ball and a strike. Sunberg has raised his average from 218 to 285 since July the 2nd. A ball and a strike. Now the signal given. Barrios is set. The delivery. Line base hit. One run's going to score. Another man's Oh, it gets away from Gore off the wall. Two runs are going to score. Sunberg doubles the left. And a high slider inside. All this started after two are out. He walked two men. And then hung a high slider inside the sunburn. The ball hit off the wall and bounced away from Gar. The Meta had a chance to keep Wills from scoring. With those two walks now, it's score. And it's four to three again. The Rangers have taken the lead. Here's Keith Smith. Boy, how Sunberg wears the White Sox out. Unbelievable. There's a high fly ball. Deep center field. Lemon is there. Makes the catch to retire the sack. You know, there are many places that really don't sell a lot of beer. The Swank Restaurant, for example. The breweries like to have their beer represented there as a matter of prestige. Now, the famous pump room at the Ambassador East Hotel is one of those places, and so is Gene Sage's Eugene, and Mon Petit as well, as Eli's place for steak. These places handle straws, of course, but like Rich Melman at the pump room says, surprisingly, the people are asking for the product, so what started out as a personal favor has suddenly become a catering to the paying customer. Yes, sir, even the swank joints like to please their customers, and when Stroh's beer is available, customers are being pleased. Stroh's family brewers for more than 200 years. Two runs, one hit. No errors, one left. Harry Carey going over to the television booth. The score here at the end of six, Texas four, White Sox three. WMAQ. We're the radio station that wants to make you rich. We place cash calls all over Chicagoland. The next one could happen at any time. In the current jackpot, there's $12,000 in cash and prizes just waiting to be won. So when your phone rings, spread the good word. WMAQ's gonna make me rich. Jimmy Pearsall back at Arlington Stadium. The Rangers came up with two runs here in the bottom of the sixth inning to go back out in front four to three with two outs, two bases on balls, and then a high slider that was thrown by Barrios that Jim Sundberg lined down the left field line, got away from Gar, and both runners scored. And now Sonner almost start things off for the White Sox here in the top of the seventh inning. Adrian Devine in relief of Doc Ellis, who gave up two long home runs to Zisk and Oscar Gamble. First pitch to him, breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Springstead called Lemon out last inning on a ball on a foot outside, and then a pitch to Hara that was as good or better. He called it a ball, but when you're at home, you get the breaks. First pitch with a strike. This pitch is inside a fastball. One ball and one strike on Eric Stoddard home. Soderholm double his first time up and then fly deep to center field. He's hitting 290, 17 home runs and 49 RBIs. 
pitches a fastball, just misses inside, brushes him back. White Sox with three runs on eight hits. The Rangers with four runs on five hits. Bases on balls. And an error by Essien has cost us a run. The 2-1 pitch, breaking ball, just misses outside. Nakon goes to 3-1. and one. Devine, with a record of 8-5, and five, is tough. Got a good slider. Stands about 6 feet 3, weighs about 195 pounds. He came over here in a trade for Burroughs, along with May, Moret, and Henderson. There's a pitch swung on it, popped off to the right side. Back goes Wills, back goes Hardgrove. Wills coming over now, and he makes the catch. Wills making a fine running catch on a ball that was down the right field line. May was charging hard. He couldn't get it. Hardgrove was stumbling going back. So it was a good thing that Wills was able to get to it. One out. Jim Essie in the hitter. Essie in 0 for 2. Ground the short and popped the short. Hitting 274 with 8 home runs and 39 RBIs. Outfield plays him straight away. Harry with the bag at third. Devine delivers. Sinker low. Ball one inside. They stay on the board. Ellis threw a pitch 88 miles an hour. Barrios 91 miles an hour. And Devine 83. The 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball lined in the left field for a base hit. That was a high breaking ball. It was hit hard by Campanaris. What a nice crowd on hand tonight. 36,852. You can bet a lot of people are sitting on top of each other in those bleachers. They have 20,000 bleacher seats here and about 15,000 reserved. Ralph Gar to hit her. Gar is 0 for 3. He's grounded the second, struck out, and flied to center. Devine into a stretch, looks over at first, kicks and delivers. Breaking ball hits the corner for a strike. And now there's activity in the bullpen for the Rangers. Looks like Darrell knows, and it is. White Sox trailing by a run. Top of the seventh inning. Rangers trail the White Sox by two games. Minnesota leads Detroit in the sixth inning, 12 to 9. They trail by a half a game, Minnesota. Divine ready. Kicks and delivers the fastball, drives him back. Sunberg was going to fire the first, but changed his mind. Essien was back quickly. One ball and one strike. Gar hitting at 302. Now he's ready. Devine flips the ball over there. Outfield, big hole in left center field. May over towards the line and not too deep. Washington, straight away in center field. Washington had a ball he could have caught last time out, but he dove at it. But he is a much better center fielder than he is a left fielder. He's got good speed. Smith, they tell me, made two great catches against Kansas City, and he's over by the line and left. There's a pitch swung on a miss. He threw that ball right by Gar. Two strikes and one ball on Ralph Gar. This is the first game of a three-game series. And the Rangers have sold this ballpark out, the reserve seats, for all three games. They ho hate to have any rain. It was, it was raining this afternoon in Fort Worth, but it's now a beautiful night here in Arlington. Pitch to Gar, swung on a miss. He threw that ball by him, high and outside. And Gar chased the bad ball. That's the first strikeout for Devine. Bannister to hit her. Bannister tripled his last time up when Washington dove after the ball and the ball got by him. And you youngsters that play center field, if you dive after a ball like that, it can be a home run or a triple. You're better off trying to catch it. Essien on it first. He singled the left. Devine flips over there again. The White Sox go from here to New York for games on Monday night, which is game of the week, ABC. There's a breaking ball, hits the corner. Devine has 14 saves and 8 wins. This is 41st appearance. Bannister ready. The one strike pitch. Swung on, lying down the right field line, curving foul into the bullpen. And bounces off the top of the dugout into the stands. 
Two strikes and no balls on Alan Bannister. Bannister hitting at 300. Three home runs and 50 RBIs. What a year he's having. I don't think there's another leadoff man or second hitter in the league with 50 RBIs. Devine now steps on the rubber and steps off and goes to the rosin bag. Boy, a big hole in left center field for Bannister. If he hits one into the tie, run will score easy. Vine ready. He fires over to first again. And I don't know why he's throwing so much over there. Essien's not going to steal second. White Sox got three in the top of the sixth to go ahead three to two. And then the Rangers got two in the bottom of the sixth to go ahead four to three. The two-strike pitch. Hit him. Hit him right on the elbow. And Devine is mad at himself. He was just trying to waste the pitch inside. And now Bannister, it looks like it hitting you on the wrist or the elbow. Charlie Sands come out, the trainer, and now Bob Lemon's out there too. Knowles continues to warm up in the bullpen. The Rangers got one run in the second inning, a double by May, and then a double by Wills on a two-strike pitch. Two strikes and no balls, you got a slider up and in and drove it down the right field line at driving a run. In the third inning, a single by Wills, a walk to Sunberg, an error by Essien, and then a slow ground ball at first, an RBI for Hargrove. Campanera struck out, and then a great play by Barrios with runners on second and third, a high hopper out in front of the plate. He charged the ball and then dove at the runner, Sunberg, and got him on one of the best plays you'll ever see. George Orta. Orta now will be the hitter with men on first and second. Orta is one for three. Now he's ready. Devine delivers. Fastball high and outside. Ball one. Orta hitting 284. 11 home runs and 66 RBIs. Grounded the first. Single to right and slide to left. Now he's got a chance to tie the ball game up. Essien with a good lead at second. Pitch is swung on drive, center field, way back. Back goes Washington, way back, way back, way back. F that way back, it's up against the wall. That ball hits the top of the wall. One runs in, two runs in. Order going to third base. Boy, that ball hit the top of the wall. Looked like it was going to go out of there. The dead center field. George Order puts us out in front with a two-run triple off the dead center field wall. I thought that ball was out of here. And a boy, Georgie, baby. I'll say one thing about our ball club. We score on the right way. We have given runs to them. There's no doubt in my mind we could have beaten the Rangers twice if we had any defense at all when we played them in Chicago. So now, the White Sox are out in front five to four as Richie Disk comes in. Disk homered his last time up. 23rd home run of the, of the year. Pitch swing on line, left field, back, back, way back, way back, way back against the wall. Smith whacks the wall. He almost made a sensational catch on a breaking ball inside, a line drive off the wall, and Smith is hurt, I think. He made a tremendous attempt to get that ball as he banged into the wall and hit his glove. Boy, what a try that young man made for that ball. Right now, Hunter is going to change pitchers. When I'm looking out at Smith, a young man who went right back to the fence. It didn't bother him a bit. And then hit the fence and bounced away from him. So this now has a double. And two RBIs on the night. Gives him two for four. Knowles will come in now to relieve Devine. Daryl Knowles, who was with the Cubs last year, has got a record of 4-1. and one. His ERA is 3.23. This will be his 34th appearance. He's got four saves. He's pitched in 39 innings, given up 36 hits, 17 runs, 14 earned, 3 home runs, 17 bases on balls. He has struck out 12. He's hit one batter and three wild pitches. Knowles, not overpowering, but a good sinker, a hard slider. He's noted to keep that ball down low. But the last time he faced us was in the 12th inning 
when the Rangers got six runs to go ahead, we came back with four off him. So we have a chance to get another run with this down at second base. Oscar Gamble step in. Gamble is last time up. He really hit a shot. I'd say about three quarters of the way up that right field bleachers. And the only one I've seen hit maybe as far or further was John Mayberry. So Oscar Gamble with 23 home runs and Richie Zisk with 23 home runs are both tied for the club leadership. Knowles ready, looks at second and delivers a breaking ball outside. Gamble hitting at 272, 23 home runs and 54 RBIs. Zisk now has 80 RBIs and 23 home runs. Zisk with a short lead at second. Campanera is playing behind him. Here's a breaking ball. Here comes the throw, and Thunberg was going to fire, but he couldn't hold on to the ball. As he went to throw, it fell out of his hand. I'll tell you one thing. The Rangers will do anything to win a ball game. They bunt, they hit and run, they pick you off a base. They're a much better fielding club than they were last year. They were probably the worst fielding club in the American League. And now they're as good a fielding club as anybody. And I think with Harris third and Campanaris at short, it makes the difference. There's a line drive left field. Smith now will take it for out number three. But not before the White Sox come up with three big runs on three hits. And the score, after six and a half innings of play, the White Sox six, the Rangers four. We're a lot like you. Jimmy Pearsall back at Arlington Stadium. The White Sox leading 6-4 going in the bottom of the seventh inning. The White Sox have got three in the sixth and three in the seventh. They've got six runs on 11 hits and one error. The Rangers four runs on five hits and no error. Francisco Barrios will face Hardgrove, Campanaris in Washington here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Barrios has struck out four and walked three. Bonnero now playing in on the grass looking for a bunt or anything. Lemon playing deep in center over towards left center. Barrios misses high. In the last two hitters Barrios pitched to, he has been high. Looks like he's losing his stuff a little bit. So Legro is warming up with Hamilton in the bullpen for the White Sox. The pitch. High again, ball two. And i got to believe he's running out of gas. He's thrown a lot of pitches here tonight. He's given up three bases on balls and two bases on balls in the sixth inning. Both scored. Has a fastball. It's the outside corner. Letter high. Two balls and one strike on Mike Hardgrove. Hitting at 3.07. He's 0 for 3 in the night. Pitch swung on fly ball, right center field. Way back, way back, way back. That ball's going to be out of here. So Barrios is losing his stuff. And there was a fastball with nothing on it because Hardgrove does not pull very often. And here comes Lemon now to get him out of there. And the ball is really jumping out of here tonight. That is the third home run of the night. We've had one by Zisk, one by Gamble, and now one by Hargrove, who is not a noted home run hitter. That gives him his sixth home run and his 41st RBI. And now the score is six to five. We just can't seem to hold on to a lead. We get good pitching two nights in a row against Cleveland and can't score. And now tonight, we score six runs and we can't hold it. And that'll be all for Barrios as McGrow takes the long walk in from the bullpen. <coughs> Barrios pitches six innings. He allows five runs, he gives up 11 hits. He has walked three and struck out four. And Legro now will take over. Texas has been a tough club for Legro to get out. The 
Legro is 6-1 and one with an ERA of 2.17. This will be his 50th appearance. 18 saves, tied with Lyle for the lead in the American League. 74 innings pitched, 59 hits, 22 runs, 18 earned, only 7 home runs, 29 bases on balls. He has struck out 49. He hasn't hit anybody, and 5 pass balls. And the big right-hander has a good fastball, generally sinks. He doesn't turn it over, he just throws it. When he's right, it sinks good. Stands about six feet five, weighs about 210 pounds. He will face Campanaris. Campanaris grounded back to the pitcher and butted into a double play that Barrios made a great play on, caught it in the fly and fired back to first for a double play. Fastball high to him, ball one. And then Campanera struck out in the fifth. He's 0 for 3. A pesty little guy with nobody out. Pitch swung on line, down left field line, foul. Breaking ball inside. This really hitting the ball hard tonight. Has driven in three runs with a home run and a double. He has scored a run. Now has 23 home runs and 80 RBIs. The 1-1 pitch, swung on line, right back at him. What a play by Legro. He didn't even know he had it. That's the second time tonight that Campanaris has hit hard back to the mound. And that time, that ball was about face high. And Legro put his glove up to protect himself, and it went right in the glove. Campanaris threw his helmet in the dugout. One out. One run in on Mike Hargrove's sixth home run here in the seventh inning. White Sox leading 6-5. to five. Washington the hitter. Swung on foul back right below us. That ball went into three hands before somebody caught it and two beers were spilt. Very muggy night here. Temperature about 93 degrees today. The one strike pitch to Claudel Washington. Way up and in. One ball and one strike. One out. Kansas City defeated Toronto 9-8. Pitch swung on, fouled off again. One ball and two strikes. One out. <clears throat> Lamonchek, the loser. Split off the winner. He's now 9-6. and six. The two-strike, one-ball pitch swung on and fouled off to Washington. Washington, who likes the ball out over the plate, had a good cut of that pitch. Barrios, who ran out of gas in the last two innings, was getting everything up. And then he got a fastball to a hitter like Hargrove, who hits mostly the left center field. He pulled it in the right center field stand. Pitch a swung on, ground ball, left field base hit by Soderholm. Soderholm guarding the line. And now Washington makes a wide turn at first. Gar almost fumbled that ball, picked it up barehanded, looked at the runner before he picked the ball up and almost lost it. That's the seventh hit for the Rangers. The White Sox have 11. First hit for Washington tonight. He is one for four. And he's got great speed. Legro now at the belt. The hitter is Greaves, throws over to first. And Washington had to dive back head first. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. 36,000 people here tonight. McGraw ready. The big right-hander looks over at first. Fires over there, too. Greve hitting 218 with five home runs and 18 RBIs. As Essien goes out the mound now and talks to Legro. He's 0 for 3. He's 0 for 2. He got hit by a pitch. Pops to the catcher, got hit by a pitch, and ground is short. And let me tell you, this guy hit 21 home runs last year for the Rangers and 85 RBIs. So you don't want to hang a breaking ball to him. Soderholm guarding the line. Lemon now over in left center field. Big hole in right center. 
pitch, breaking ball, Steve Rye. Big hole between first and second. Over by the bag now is Orta. Ready for the double play. Deep at third is Soderholm. LeGro ready. Takes his time. Kicks his head once, twice, and throws another breaking ball outside. And what he's trying to do when he's moving his head is to get that runner to stop on his right foot so he can't get a good start. One ball and one strike on Tom Greaves. Greaves, the designated hitter tonight. Sauter will move back a few steps now. The girl ready. Throws over there in a hurry. Washington has only stolen two bases. They say he does not get a good jump, but he's got good speed. He can go all the way from first on a double. Throws over there again, he dies back, and Lamar stepped all over him as the ball was to the right field side. And now the umpire kicks the bag to give the runner a chance to brush himself off, but Lamar, that big guy, weighing about 220, almost stepped in the middle of his back to get that ball. The bullpen right now is just standing there. LeGrow ready. Throws over there again. Almost got him. And the fans... Not too happy about all the action over at first base, but I like it. Keep him on there. Barrios does not keep the runners on good, and they get a good lead on him. 1-1 one, one pitch now to Grieve. Swung on, fouled off, a slider on the outside part of the plate. He's fouled it off behind the plate. And the count goes to 2-1. and one. McGraw walking behind the rubber now. It steps off the mound, goes to the outfield, almost side of the grass. Big hole in right center field. This straight away in right. Guard, deep and left. Two strikes and a ball on Greve. Infield and double play. There goes the runner. There's a throw. There's a throw. It got him easy. Boy, Essien unloaded in a hurry. Didn't make a real good throw. Was kind of high. But Orta tagged him as Washington had a bad jump. And I can see why he doesn't steal many bases. But LeGro throwing over there bothered him. He must have dove back in there about four times. The count goes even now. That pitch was outside. Washington caught stealing. That's the second time he was caught stealing this year. Now, I don't know why LeGro's into his stretch, but he is. Has a breaking ball swung on strike three. So there's one run. On two hits, no errors, and nobody left. And the score after seven fillings of play, the White Sox six, the Rangers five. The Hummingbird Supper Club is Chicago's newest and most exciting supper club, featuring the best in continental and West Indian cuisine, and they're located at 8620 South Ashland Avenue. The Hummingbird Supper Club presents its grand opening affair tonight and tomorrow, August 13th, featuring Hugh Hendricks and the Buccaneers with the fabulous floor show. And Saturday, a Jamaican independent celebration. Tickets are available by calling 445-0500. Advanced reservations for dining is suggested. The Hummingbird Supper Club also has facilities for ballrooms, banquet, and meeting facilities, and, of course, ample free parking. So for that next special function of yours, have it at the Hummingbird Supper Club. And remember, two big nights at the Hummingbird Supper Club presenting their grand opening affair being held upstairs and downstairs at 8620 South Ashland Avenue tonight and tomorrow night. For more information and reservations, please call 445-0500. That's 445-0500. Zero five hundred. Hi again, everybody. Lauren Brown along with Jimmy Pearsall back at Arlington, Texas. We go to the eighth inning. The White Sox out in front, six to five. Oh, what an outstanding throw by Jim Essien. And really the value, Jimmy, of the pitcher holding that runner close to first. That's what made the play, plus the quick release and strong throw by Essien. Gerald Knowles on the mound to face Lamar Johnson here. Here's the first pitch by the left-hander, and it's low a ball. Lamar, two for three tonight. Against Ellis, he was two for two. He grounded out against Devine. Left-hander delivers the pitch. Here's a check swing and a ball, two and oh. Ellis allowed three runs on eight hits in five in the third innings, and the 
umpire at first says Lamar went around. He is really upset. Larry Barnett calls a strike on him, and Lamar just threw his bat on the ground, and Marty Springstad is talking to him now. Fortunately, Lamar didn't get thrown out. Yeah. Because that is a very public display of disgust over the umpire's call, and usually it means ejection. I'll tell you one thing. Now they want the, the benches how they have to throw him out. One ball and one strike to Lamar. Here's the pitch. Called strike two. Devine went an inning and a third, allowed three runs on three hits. And now Knowles is pitching. He's pitched a third of an inning, and he leads it off pitching here in the eighth inning. Six to five White Sox trying to get this nine-game road trip off on a winning start. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder down to Campanaris at short. He's got it, and he throws him out for the first out of the inning. Lamar went up with a ball around his eyes, and instead of getting that ball in the air, he jumped on it, and he went downward, pounding it into the ground to Campanaris, and there's one out. And the batter is Chet Lemon, who's had a very frustrating night. He's hit into a double play with runners at first and second. Runners at first and third. He's grounded out both times ending the inning. And then he was called out on strikes back in the sixth inning with nobody on to end the inning. He was very frustrated, almost got thrown out in a big argument with Marty Springstead. Here's the first pitch to Chet, and it's a fastball low. Darrell Knowles pitched well against the Sox a week ago. He was the winner in the 9-8 game against the White Sox. And the next night, came back and got a save. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Here's a swing and a miss. Did we get all those runs for we scored the four runs in the 12th? Was that was off Devine. Devine and yeah. Did he come in to relieve Devine? Uh, yeah, got the save. Left-hander in the windup and the pitch to Lemon. And it's outside and low a ball. Two and one to count. White Sox about hit the Rangers 11-7. to seven. Two breaks for both clubs. One when the Rangers had nobody on and two outs. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball in the inside part of the plate. Barrios walked the next two men, and Sunberg doubled home two runs to make it a 4-3 to three ball game. Then the White Sox with a runner at first and two out and a two-strike count on Bannister. He got hit with a pitch. Then Orta tripled for two runs, and Dis Zisk doubled him home. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a grounder right back to the mound. He's got it, and he throws him out two down. Boy, Jimmy, he's just throwing nothing up there but junk but he's getting people out a pitcher of Knowles type will get our club out because we're free swingers you know if you don't go the other way with him he just takes a lot off and you swing hard you do just what he wants about his career has been Zisk but he won't bat for a while <laughs> he's tearing him up tonight he almost tore up that left field wall here's the pitch here's a check swing and a strike to Soderholm Eric has doubled in three trips Texas out in front, one to nothing, then two to nothing in the fifth. Here's a pitch, here's a chopper to the left side. Campanaris has it, throws, he got him. Nice play, getting it on the outfield grass. And Eric, running as best he can with that bad knee, almost beat it out. But a fine throw by Campanaris, his best of the night. Boy, Campanaris is a picture when you see him straighten up and fire. So the White Sox go down one, two, three here in the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's the White Sox 6, Texas 5. Wouldn't you love to get a great deal on a brand new Chevy Love truck? A half-ton pickup that actually carries more than a half-ton? Well, what are you waiting for? The word is out that Chevy dealers have lots of these brand new half-tonners in stock, ready for immediate delivery. And that means there's never been a better time to buy. Because everybody knows that when stocks are high, that's when the deals are good. And right now, the availability of in-stock Love pickups is the best it's ever been. Chevy's tough new Love pickup has power brake standard and a big six-foot box to carry the load. You get four-cylinder engine performance, and for the first time, you can team it up with an available turbo hydromatic transmission. Check out and price out your Chevy dealer's complete line of tough trucks. Half-ton, three-quarter ton, and one-ton Chevy pickups. Do it today. Get your pick of the pickups where the selection's best and the deals are great at your Chevy dealers. Roy 
Warren Brown with Jimmy Pearsall back in Arlington. We go to the bottom of the eighth. White Sox out in front, six to five. And let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is WMAQ Chicago. Davey May leads it off here in the eighth inning. He has doubled and scored in three trips. Facing Laren Legro. Legro came on in relief of Barrios after he gave up a leadoff home run to Hargrove in the seventh. Right-hander delivers. Here's the pitch, a fastball for a strike. Kansas City beat Toronto 9-8. Minnesota out in front of Detroit 12-3 in the bottom of the third. Here's the one-strike pitch, a swing and a foul coming up this way. And he's ahead of him 0-2. But Minnesota held on and beat Detroit 12 to 11. So both the Royals and the Twins have won one-run ball games. The White Sox trying to win a one-run ball game here tonight. Right-hander ready, the two-strike pitch, breaking ball just missed on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. May will be followed by Toby Hera and Bump Wills. Right-hander ready, here's the pitch, high and inside of all, two and two. May, a left-handed hitter. Hera will bat from the right side, and Bump Wills, a switch hitter. Rangers led 2-0, to nothing. then the Sox took the lead, 3-2. to two. Rangers came back to take the lead, 4-3. to three. Sox came back to take the lead, 6-4. to four. The Rangers got another run, and it's now 6-5. to five. Here's a swing and a base hit into left field. Gar charging the ball. Here comes May, going to try for two, but now he goes back. A leadoff single. The tying run is on. Breaking ball that he just jumped on and punched into left center field after being in the hole 0-2. Well, you got to give these guys credit, Jimmy. Our pitchers three, four times tonight have been out in front of hitters 0-2, but have lost them. And you got to give the hitters a little bit of credit for hanging in there, and we're going to get some activity in the bullpen. Randy Wiles, the left-hander. See, they're a different type ball club than ours. They just try to get on. They're just trying to peck away. They don't want to strike out. Soderholm looking for the sacrifice. Here's the pitch, and it's butted right out in front of the plate. Essien has it, throws to first. The sacrifice is successful, going from two to four. So Hera gets his job done as May goes to second. And the batter will be Bump Wills, who has had a perfect night. He has doubled in a run. He has singled and scored. He has walked and scored. So he has played a role in three of the five runs scored by Texas tonight. So the tying run at second base with one out. Now Essien, out in front of home plate, yelling out to Legro. Now he goes off the mound and stands back in the grass. Now wipes off his mouth with his sleeve and steps back up in the rubber. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. And it's outside of all. One ball and no strikes. Legro not throwing awfully hard is working the, the corners and trying to throw breaking stuff. May with the lead off a second. Right-hander is ready. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball for a strike. Evens the count one and one. A leadoff single by May. He was sacrificed to second, and that's where we're at now with a 1-1 count. To Wills. Sunberg in the on deck circle. Right hander ready. Working out of the stretch. The 1 1 pitch. Swing and a shot, a base hit to left field. Here comes May around third. They're going to hold him up. The throw coming to the plate. And he is held up at third. Runners at first and third. The tying run at third with one out. The lead run at first. Magro not throwing good at all. Just seems like that good, hard, sinking fastball he had for about four months has left him. That's the third hit off of Laren. In an inning and a third. Two in this inning. And Jim Sunberg, who doubled in two runs to give the Texas a 4-3 to three lead back in the sixth inning, is up. Getting a standing ovation from many of the 36,852 here tonight. They're beyond capacity tonight. 
They seat 35,698. And they're 1,200 above that. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a base hit to left center field. The game is tied up. Here comes Wills around second. Here's the throw into second. He gets back in time. All tied up. LeGros has given up three hits here in the inning. Six to six ball game. And now the lead run at second base in the bottom of the eighth with only one out. You know, when you don't have it, you don't have it. It's just one of those things. And we don't have anybody thrown down the bullpen there standing there. So I guess he's going to go all the way with him. Well, he's got another right-hander to face in Smith. The left-hander, Hargrove, is in the on-deck circle, so he might let him pitch to one more hitter here. Sox need a double play to get out of the inning. Legro ready. Here's the pitch. High of all. A two-strike single by May. A sacrifice and back-to-back singles. Sunberg is driven in half the six runs. Lauren, you notice how he's forcing his slider? It just isn't... A good, quick, hard down slider. It's a fat one. So this game in the hands of Legro and Knowles right now. There go the runners. Here's a pitch. A swing and a long drive. Way back. Home run. And there may have gone the ball game. As Legro has given up four hits and four runs in the inning. And that is all for Legro. The rookie, Keith Smith, just hit his first major league home run. The hit and run was on, the runners were off, and he put one into the left field seat. And the Rangers are out in front 9-6, to six, though the hits are evened up. You know, Smith had a 200 batting average, no home runs, no RBIs. It's kind of hard to believe, but that's what's happened. And now we have a relief pitcher coming in, Wiles. Wiles has got one win. Well, Legro just didn't have it. He pitched an inning and a third. He allowed four runs on five hits. Walked none and struck out one. So the White Sox in jeopardy of getting knocked out of first place. They get the hitting back tonight, but the pitching has faltered. Wiles, who was recalled from Iowa for Knapp. Knapp went down. And the left-hander, his last time out, got a win. He's a fastball curveball pitcher. Stands 62. He's about 190 pounds. And the Ranger fans are singing na, na, hey, hey, goodbye. Well, they are three outs away from that having to become a fact. The Sox have another inning, but right now they are in trouble not in River City, but in Arlington, Texas. In the ninth, it'll be Essie and Gar and Bannister against Bryles. So, Randy Wiles in the ballgame faces Mike Hargrove. Three of the four hits Awful Agro and Hargrove tries to bunt his way on and misses strike one were by right-handed hitters. Now that's just a shame. Your ace of the bullpen could not hold him. Laren has really had problems of late. Here's the one-strike pitch, and it's a fastball low. Wiles, a Texas boy from Conroe, Texas, a graduate of Louisiana State University. His parents are here tonight. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch outside of all, 2-1. and one. A three-run homer by a rookie. 
seven Texas, a three-run lead. Six to three. Fastball, base hit. Left field. Gar going to cut it off. Hargrove. Oh, the ball gets beyond Gar. Hargrove goes to second. He'll go to third. Here's the throw coming in. It'll be probably a double and an error. We'll wait and see. Oh, they give it a triple. I don't see how in the world they could do it, but they're the official scorers. Gar mishandled the ball and got beyond him to the wall. So a runner at third and still only one out. And Bert Campanaris the batter. Infield playing in. The Sox lose this one. It could be a devastating loss to say the least. Out in front with two innings to go. A swing and a miss. Strike one. After coming from behind twice, two to nothing and taking the lead three to two, and then down four to three, taking the lead six to three, and then giving up five runs in the next two innings to trail. Left hander ready, here's the pitch. Inside a ball. There is a long way to go, there's no doubt about it. It would not be the end of the world if the White Sox would lose, but it certainly wouldn't help the mat situation any. Left-hander ready. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Here's a swing and a base hit to right field. Campanaris makes the turn at first and goes back. It's a 7-3 ball game, or 10-6 ball game now. I said 6-3 a moment ago. It was 9-6. So it's 10-6. That run off of Wiles. And Claudel Washington, the batter, So the White Sox in jeopardy now of moving out of first place. It would be the first time since the 1st of July. Claudel Washington, the batter, punts right back to the mound. He goes to second for the force out. Washington bunting here. They get Campanaris at second, one to six. And Washington on in the fielder's choice, and Tom Greve, the batter, the ninth man to bat in the inning. The Rangers erupted for five runs. Three singles and a three-run homer off of Laren Legro. Wiles working out of the stretch. Tosses over to first, the runner back. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball. A looper into right field. It may drop. Orta out there. He's got it. Nice running catch. And that retires the side. But in the inning, the Rangers come up with five runs on six hits. There were no errors and one man left on. We go to the ninth at Texas. The Rangers 10, the White Sox 6. back at Texas as we go to the ninth the White Sox trailing by four runs here tonight 
As we go to the ninth, this the biggest deficit. They trailed one to nothing at the end of two, two to nothing at the end of five. Came up with three in the sixth to take the lead three to two. Trailed four to three at the end of six and took the lead six to four with a fine display of power in the sixth and seventh. But the Rangers came back with a home run by Hargrove in the seventh to make it a six to five ball game. And then Laren Legro lost it in the eighth. Gave up three singles and then a three-run homer by rookie Key Smith. The Rangers added another run for their tenth of the night. A ten to six ball game as Essien leads it off. He'll be followed by Gar and Bannister. And a left-hander, Lindblad, down in the bullpen for the Rangers. Left-hander goes into the windup, and the first pitch to Essien's a strike. Minnesota and Kansas City have already won tonight. And now the Rangers are winning. Here's the one-strike delivery. Here's a swing and a base hit down the left field line. Waited on that breaking pitch, and Essien singles. His second hit of the night. So the White Sox, trying to rally here, get a leadoff base hit as Ralph Gar steps up. Minnesota over Detroit, 12 to 11. Kansas City over Toronto, 9 to 8. If the White Sox are unable to pull it out, Minnesota will move into first place with the White Sox in second, a half a game out. Texas in third, a game and a half out, and Kansas City two back. Here's a swing and a bouncer up the middle. Might get through, hits the bag, a base hit. Here goes Essien going to third. And the White Sox have runners at first and third with nobody out as Gar gets his first hit of the night. Now Bannister comes up. Well, if Allen can get on, you've got your power hitters in order this and Gamble. So it's not over yet. Allen Bannister, the batter. The White Sox need five to take the lead, four to tie it. Hits are even up now at 13 apiece. Here's a swing and a shot into left field. Keith Smith is over there, though. He's got it. Here comes Essie and tagging up. He'll score. It's a 10 to 7 ball game now. A sacrifice fly and an RBI for Bannister. Gar holds it first. That's the first run off the nose. Now the White Sox can get Orta on. Zisk would represent the tying run. Orta tonight is two for four, a single and a two-run triple. He also scored a run. A five-run eighth inning for Texas. Wiped out a one-run White Sox lead. Put the Sox down by four. Now they're down by three. The wind is blowing in for the first time tonight. Here's a strike to Orta. George looks at the umpire, doesn't like it, and waits for the next pitch. Left-hander is ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a shot into left field, going way back. Smith going back, going back. He's got it at the warning track. And there are two outs. Well, that little kid's done a job tonight defensively in this inning after getting the three-run homer in the bottom of the eighth, and now... There are two out. Oh, Richie's this, the batter. Still, the tying run is yet to come to the plate in the inning. Two outs, practically everybody leaving. White Sox would like to keep them around for a while. First pitch sliced down the right side, foul. Well, the White Sox got decent pitching the last couple of nights, especially last night, but they haven't been hitting. They get their hitting shoes on again tonight, but the pitching has faltered. White Sox have one out to go here. Zist trying to keep it going. Back-to-back -back singles by Essien and Gar. And then, Knowles got the next two men. Left-hander ready, here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center field. This will be the ball game. Washington is there. 
He's got it. The game is over. Texas wins 10 to 7. In the inning, one run, two hits, no errors, one left. We'll be back to wrap it up in a minute. You say you scraped and sanded and painted and polished, and now your boat is really ship shape. Well, what about those old spark plugs? Your boat isn't really ship shape until your engine is, and that means a tune up with fresh Champion spark plugs. A fresh set of Champions can give you smoother performance and less gallons per hour. So before you ship out, tune up with the plugs that sparks more racers to victory than any other brand. Fill her up with Champions. Lauren Brown back at Texas. Here are the unhappy totals. For Texas, 10 runs, 13 hits, and no errors. Six men left on. For the White Sox, seven runs, 13 hits, and one error, and six men left on. The winning pitcher, Knowles, Five and one, his second win over the White Sox in the last week and a half. And the loser, Laren Legro, who is now six and two. Time of the ball game, two hours and forty six minutes. The Rangers jumped out in front in the second inning with one out, May doubled. With two outs on a two strike pitch, Wills doubled him home, and the Rangers led one to nothing. The Rangers made it two to nothing in the fifth when they loaded the bases with nobody out. Hargrove grounded out to Lamar Johnson on a high hopper with the run scoring, making it 2 to nothing. and Barrios got out the next two batters. The White Sox responding after Barrios got out of that big jam by coming up with three runs in the sixth, a triple by Bannister, a two-run homer by Zisk, followed by a solo home run by Gamble, and the White Sox led 3-2. to two. But the Rangers came right back in the sixth with nobody on and two outs. Hera and Wills walked. And Sunberg hit a two-run double, putting the Rangers out in front by a score of 4-3. to three. But the White Sox, not to be denied, came right back with three runs in the seventh. With a run on and one out, Bannister was hit by a pitch. Orta tripled home two runs, and then Ziss doubled home Orta to make it a 6-4 to four ball game. But then Hargrove let off the seventh with a home run, and it was a 6-5 to five ball game. Laren Legro was brought on in relief. He gave up one hit in the inning, and a man was thrown out stealing, and it looked like the White Sox were in pretty good shape as they went to the bottom of the eighth with their ace reliever, Laren Legro, on the mound. He gave up a leadoff single on a 1-2 pitch to May, who was then sacrificed to second. Bump Wills singled him to third, and then Sunberg singled home May to tie up the ball game with Wills at second. So runners at first and second, one out, and a rookie at the plate who had only five hits in 22 times at bat this year went after the first LeGro pitch, a right-handed hitter, and hit it into the left field seats for a three-run homer. Then, Wiles came in the ball game, gave up a tainted triple to Hargrove and a single by Campanaris, and the Rangers had scored five runs in the eighth. The White Sox... Had a modest threat in the ninth, came up with one run, and that was it, as Knowles held on and won and beat the White Sox 10-7. to seven. So it's just a shame the Sox had their hitting shoes on tonight, but the pitchers could not hold the Rangers. You know, they talk about this Ranger pitching staff as being the best in the division. In five games now, the White Sox have knocked out every starter, but in those five games, the Rangers have won four of them, and Darrell Knowles has had a part in three of them. Well, this would have been a big one to win because Kansas City won and Minnesota won. So for the first time since the 1st of July, the White Sox are out of first place. So there's a long way to go, no doubt about it, in this four-team race for the Western Division Championship. But it would have been so good to win here tonight on the beginning of this nine-game road trip. So the White Sox are just going to have to bear down and come back tomorrow night and Sunday night to try to take two out of three here. The Rangers have now beaten the White Sox 
three times in this ballpark. The White Sox have also won three here. And for the season, the Rangers have won eight out of 13 ball games. So there's no way the White Sox will win the season series against the Texas Rangers. But they will try to come back and even up the series tomorrow night with Steve Stone going against Burt Blylevin. And then on Sunday night, Jack Cusick going against Nelson Bryles. Well, a tough game to send your way because of looked like the White Sox might do it, leading, even though it was by a slim one-run lead with their ace reliever, but it was not to be. So the Rangers win it by a score of 10-7. to Here are the standings now after Kansas City beat Toronto 9-8 to and Minnesota beat Detroit 12-11. to Minnesota is in first place with a 67-48 and one-loss record. The White Sox are in second, a half a game out, 65 and 47. Texas, third place, a game and a half out. And Kansas City in fourth place, two games back. In other baseball tonight, Boston defeated Seattle 7 to 2 to remain in first place in the American League Eastern Division. Got to have a final on that Baltimore game. I can't believe that they are at the end of five. Checking the ticker here for you. Now we have no final. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the scorecard is kept up. Other times it's not. And it wasn't tonight, at least in the Eastern Division. The Yankees, we don't know the final, swept a doubleheader from California. So the Yankees gain a half a game on Boston. They're three and a half out. Baltimore will either be a game and a half or two and a half out. Over in the National League, the Cubs were defeated by the Phillies 10-3 to today, so the Phillies four games in front of the Cubs. The Pirates defeated the Mets 3-2 to in the first game of the doubleheader, and the latest that we have on that Pirate game is Gossage has come on to pitch in the eighth inning. They were tied up 4-4, and Montreal and St. Louis tied up 1-1 in the bottom of the ninth inning. And again, the final here, Texas 10, the White Sox 7. This has been White Sox Baseball tonight from Arlington, Texas, brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, trucks that are built to stay tough, by the Champion Spark Plug Company, who reminds you that the fresher your plugs, the better your mileage, by Stroh's Beer, for more than 200 years, real beer lovers know that it's Stroh's, by True Value Hardware Stores, True Value, it's not just a name, it's their way of doing business, and by the Zenith Corporation, the one with Color Sentry Automatic Picture System and Electronic Video Guard Tuning. This is Lauren Brown speaking for Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall, thanking you for listening. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow night at 7.15 when Steve Stone and the White Sox take on Burt Blylevin and the Texas Rangers. Dan Hozak has been our engineer. This has been a WMAQ Sports Presentation. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. 
We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000